Hello, to my guys, gals, non binary battles, and welcome back to Weekly Wildlife Wisdom. Uh, as currently, I am your host, Zirietti, and let's go ahead and begin with it. Uh, the first organism of the week is the oscillated turkey, which is a species of turkey residing primarily on the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico and as well as throughout parts of Belize and Guatemala. It's a relatively large bird at around 3 to 4 feet in length and between 6 and 12 pounds in weight. They are quite colorful birds, with body feathers of both sexes being a mixture of bronze, green, uh, and green iridescent colors. Tail feathers of both sexes are bluish gray with an eye-shaped spot uh, near the end of their tails with bright gold tips on the feathers. The turkeys spend most of their time on the ground foraging for leaves, nuts, and insects, and due to their long legs, they often prefer to run to escape danger rather than fly though they can fly swiftly and powerful for short distances out of necessity. Uh, they generally roost high in the trees, away from night hunting predators such as jaguars, uh, usually in family nest groups. Uh, these turkeys are frequently hunted for both their meat and feathers and are considered in danger throughout their wild range. Next up is the giant river otter, which is a large otter native to the Patanao wetlands and the Amazon River Basin. At over 5 feet long and 50 to 70 pounds, they are the largest member of the mustelid family, which includes other otters, as well as weasels, badgers, and ferrets. Giant otters are also by far the loudest and most vocal members of their group. Uh, the giant river otters are very sociable and live in family groups of between 3 and 10 individuals that hunt together, feeding primarily on fish, but also reptiles and amphibians as large as small caimans. Like all otters, they have thick, soft, waterproof fur, and hunting for said fur has sadly been also their downfall. Between 1950 and 1970, giant river otters were subject to extreme exploitation throughout Peru, uh, exporting 20,000 pelts. By 1973, when trade of their pelt was prohibited, uh, the giant river otters were all but eliminated in South America. During the past 40 years, the giant river otter population has managed to make a comeback, However, they are still endangered and face constant threats such as pollution and deforestation. Next up is the marine iguana, also known as the sea iguana, the saltwater iguana, or the Galapagos marine iguana. Uh, they are a species of iguana, of, not iguana, iguana, found only throughout the Galapagos Islands. Unique among modern lizards, it is a marine reptile that has the ability to forage in the sea for algae, which makes up most of almost... Uh, most, if not all, of its diet, although they occasionally eat other plants, such as cacti and some fruits. Uh, in the water, they swim with a snake-like motion and hold themselves against the bottom with their long claws in order to graze. Though they feed in the water, marine iguanas are particularly terrestrial, uh, and they are often observed warming themselves in the sun, this uh, for prolonged periods of time. Uh, they also nest near the shore. The reason they sun themselves so long is because the waters around the Galapagos Archipelago are, are surprisingly cold, uh, with currents flowing from the south as far as Antarctica. And so as, so as quote-unquote cold-blooded animals, which are ectotherms, which rely on the external environment to heat themselves, they have to sun themselves up quite a bit which is also a result for them usually being blue to dark black in color. Marine iguanas are also known for their very efficient salt glands, where they sneeze out salt. This is because they feed underwater and they ingest a large amount of the salt water, and in order to prevent dehydration, they must expel that salt without expelling the water. Uh, so they have these specialized glands near their nostrils that remove the salt from their blood. And in order to prevent buildup, they frequently sneeze to blow the salt out. Due to their limited range and specific niche, they are considered at risk of extinction and are constantly facing threats in the form of fishing, bycatch, which means get, like getting trapped in nets or lines, and having their nests preyed upon by invasive animals such as pigs, cats, and dogs. Next up is the superior lyre bird, or lyre bird which is an Australian songbird, one of two species of the family Mariidae, 
And at over three feet of length and around upwards of two pounds of weight, they are some of the world's largest songbirds. Superb lyre birds or ground dwelling birds that typically live solitary lives. Adults usually live singly throughout their territories, but young birds uh, will associate in small groups, which can be single or mixed sex. Lyre birds are not strong flyers and are not highly mobile, often remaining within the same area for their entire lives. They are renowned for their elaborate tail and courtship displays. However, they are most well known for their impressive ability to mimic sounds with near complete accuracy, including other bird songs, frog croaks, animal calls, running water, thunder, chainsaws, car alarms, camera shutters, music, ringtones, and even spoken words. Traditionally, it was thought this mimicry was primarily developed by males for mating courtship. However, recent studies have found that females also reduce these mimic vocalizations while foraging and during nest defense, suggesting that mimicry has a function in deterring predation. Cytorona regalis, also known as the regal moth or the royal walnut moth, is a North American moth in the family Saturnidae. Found throughout the United States and Mexico, and with over six inch wingspans, they are one of the USA's largest insects. These are generally large, attractive moths sporting distinctive colors, shapes, and pattern, pattern eye spots on their wings. Like other members of their family, regal moths emerge from their pupa stage without functioning mouth parts, and their sole purpose is to find a mate and procreate. They live in their adult form for about 10 days, subsisting on stored nutrients left over from their caterpillar stage. Their caterpillar stage, which is six inches long, uh, are often called the hickory horn devils for their bright green bodies covered with black spines and their and distinctive red devil-shaped horns on their heads. Next up is the pronghorn, which is the only surviving member of the Antilocobridae family, uh, and their closest living relatives are giraffes and okapis. They are native to grasslands and shrublands and throughout North America, primarily feeding on various forms of grasses and cacti that are seldom ate by other animals. Typically weighing around 100 pounds, standing between 3 and 4 feet tall at the shoulder, uh, they are distinctive due to their reddish markings and unique builds. The migration of pronghorn depends entirely on where the pronghorn lives. Some southern herds do not need to migrate due to their habitat being suitable year-round. However, northern herds participate in up to 300-mile long round-trip migrations from their winter feeding grounds to their summer breeding grounds, where females typically give birth to twins. Although sometimes preyed upon by cougars, coyotes, and golden, e golden eagles and wolves, they are typically quite skilled at avoiding predators, utilizing their impressive speed, with healthy adults routinely able to reach 55 miles per hour, making them the second fastest land animal behind the cheetah. And our extinct organism of the week is another dinosaur. The Stiggy Moloch was a pachycephalosaur dinosaur that, which lived around 65 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period throughout Montana and Canada. Uh, and there was a contemporary of animals such as Triceratops, Tyrannosaurus rex, and Calosaurus, and Quetzalcoatlus. It was first discovered in the Hell Greek Formation by Peter Glotton and Hans Dieter Suus. It was named Stiggy Moloch, which means demon from the river Styx, and it was given this name due to its skull looked very much like a demon from Christian artwork. At approximately 10 feet long, 3 feet high, and 170 pounds, it is the second largest pachycephalosaur dinosaur so far discovered throughout North America. It was bipedal and had distinctive bony spikes on its skull, some of which were up to 4 inches long. It is believed that these horns were used by males uh, as they competed for females, scraping against each other. Although still heavily disputed, some paleontologists now believe what is called Stiggy Moloch was actually a juvenile version of the larger pachycephalosaurus. But as of this date, this theory has yet to be 100% confirmed. Thank you guys, and take care, my guys, gals, and my binary pals.